three people here. We get tagged, we're gonna fire one. We use our beads. Threat our two. Threat our three, I meant. We gotta cast our ultimate. And we're able to get a pick onto the Sukiyomi. What a do, skibbity boo, it's your boy Sean B Gaming, and today we have a viewer request to play Vulcan in mid. If you are new to the channel, I upload every single day. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intentions of seeing what went right what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If there is something that we learn together, make sure you check out the channel and subscribe for more content. If you are a returning viewer, Vulcan is a pretty average mage. He can be dove really hard by the enemy team and there's not too much you can do about it. However, if you can kind of wiggle by the early game without going down too many times, you can deal some serious damage. This game was very, very weird. We got the most assists out of anyone on our team, we had the most player damage, and we barely got any kills. However, I think we still had a pretty good Vulcan game. So let's go ahead and jump into Vulcan's kit. Vulcan's 1, Backfire. Vulcan's going to shoot a line attack that's so strong it's going to knock him back. This attack is going to mark the first enemy god that it hits, and then the Infernal Cannon, Vulcan's 2, is going to prioritize that target and deal 15% more damage to that god. The marked lifetime is 4 seconds. I just wanted to point this out real quick. Apollo gets the minions to go towards him, and then he gets them to go back by stepping outside of the circle. We miss a lot of our one damage because of this. We're gonna be late to lane, which is gonna hurt us a little bit. Vulcan's two, Infernal Cannon. Vulcan's gonna construct a cannon that shoots fireballs in a cone every second. The cannon lasts until it is destroyed or another is placed. It's going to inherit Vulcan's penetration, but it does not apply on hit effects like Soul Reaver. The cannon takes 50% additional damage from non-god sources, and the cannon is going to ignore 25% of the target's magical protections. Vulcan's 3. Vulcan's going to throw a ball that's going to knock up enemies and damage them. Vulcan's ultimate. Vulcan's going to shoot a rocket that explodes on impact. The rocket starts at 75% strength and it increases in damage the further it travels from Vulcan. Vulcan's passive. Master Craftsman. Whenever Vulcan successfully hits an enemy god with an ability, he gains bonus movement speed and MP5 for 5 seconds. The movement speed is going to be 15% and the MP5 is going to be 15. In terms of the leveling order, at level 1, we want to put a point to our 1. Level 2, put a point to our 3. Level 3, put a point to our 2. Level 4, put another point to our 1. Then we want to max out our ultimate whenever we can. Max out our 1, max out our 3, max out our 2. I see a lot of Vulcans putting a point into their 2 at level 1. I think this is a very bad idea because the turret is very easily destroyed and then there goes all of your damage. Okay. I That's too bad. All I do is win. Whoops. We're going to try to hit these harpies but Humbat's back so we're actually not going to hit the harpies. There's a little bit of an interesting dynamic between Nox and my one. We have to get our one off before we get silenced by her two. Vulcan has some pretty strong early game pressure. If you can clear the wave with your one and tag the enemy god, and then hit level two, throw out your meatball, get the knock up, and then hit your one again, you can usually get a pick on the enemy god. We did not get to demonstrate that this game because we were late to lane. Thank you, Apollo. We're going to go ahead and focus on this wave right here. We started with Conduit Gem and then the Tier 1 of Spear of Desolation. Conduit Gem is going to provide us 25 magic power, 10 MP5. It has a passive that every second you gain a stack of arcane energy, causing your next damaging ability to deal an additional 2 true damage and remove all stacks. This effect can stack up to 20 times. We're pretty low on mana. We're probably just going to clear this wave, think about backing. They have a interesting team comp. They're Fafnir and Tsukiyomi traded roles. 
So Sugiyomi is their carry, Fafnir is their jungle, and then Baron is support. We're just going to basic attack this minion wave. Here comes Fafnir, so we're going to fall back, dodge his hammer. Avoid Nox, we got our wiggle shoes on today, boys. We're going to go ahead and back, tell people on the left to back it up. We're going to go ahead and go into the lifesteal boots. The ideal combo with Vulcan is you want to hit somebody with your 3, place your 2, and then tag them with the 1, all while they're still in the air from your 3. Be careful left. Bye -bye. Vulcan does have pretty good objective secure with his ultimate. If we were to leave lane and our turret were to destroy the minions, we would still get the full gold and XP for it. So Vulcan does have a pretty interesting mechanic that way. We went with beads as our relic. They have a Baron on their team and a Nox. So I feel like beads is just the best option. We're going to let our turret clean up the rest of the wave, and we're going to go ahead and rotate right. You think Osiris is going to try to run deep. He runs back instead of going deep. We're able to clean him up with our one. Getting some decent damage onto that Baron from our turret. I'm going for jungle buff. We're going to go ahead and hit our red buff. So, interesting fact, it's actually been a year since I posted my first video. I think it was the 8th, it was whenever I posted a hell mid. Be careful, Enemy missing left. If I was smart and on top of it, I would have posted a hell mid exactly one year later. But I was not on top of it. If I sound a little off this morning, I feel like I just woke up a little congested, not feeling too hot. But we still got a video to make. On my way. Enemy missing middle. Enemy missing Man, we are just missing meatballs this game. So whenever minions attack our turret, they're going to deal more damage than if an enemy god were to attack our turret. We're going to go ahead and back right here. Get the tier 2 of Spear of Desolation. Vulcan does not have a traditional escape. However, if you use your 1 at the right moment, you can kind of dodge abilities with the 1. That's the combo we're looking for. Throw out our three, throw out our turret, throw out our one. We're gonna get fire our ultimate. If she aguses it, good for her. We miss our one, that would have been a pick right there. Nox and Tsukiyomi on us, we're being super aggressive, trying to get that pick. We're gonna use our beads right here. Throw out a meatball right under us. That is another little tip with Vulcan. If you feel like you're getting pressured, just look at the ground and throw your three, which is often referred to as a meatball. If an enemy is trying to get basics on you, they're going to get knocked up, and you should have created enough distance for you to get away. Grouping in mid. Looks like it kind of dispersed. We're thinking about rotating onto this Fafnir. Attack. 
We miss everything, so we're going back to the lane. We are almost at enough money to get the Spear of Desolation. We need about another 70 gold or so. We get our three off. We're gonna miss our one, which is super unfortunate. Our one is the ability that we need to hit this game. We're gonna go ahead and cast our ultimate because Baron's not gonna be moving a lot. We get some decent damage. We hit him with the one. We're gonna throw out our three. We get the knock up on the Nox. Fafnir is rotating from behind. Or I guess from left lane. Throw out a meatball, get the knock up. Getting some good damage, we're gonna throw our turret out. Our turret kind of acts as a zoning mechanism. If they walk up to it, they're gonna take some damage. You can attack the turret from outside of its damage range. However, if you see an enemy doing that, throw a meatball at him and then fire your one. Be careful, right. Retreat right lane. On my way. Getting some good damage onto that Baron. We're gonna go in the back because we have enough money for a Spear of Desolation. Spear of Desolation is going to provide us 110 power, 10 flat penetration, and 10% cooldown reduction. It has a passive that you're going to decrease your cooldowns by 2 seconds and your cooldown of your ultimate by 8 seconds anytime you get a kill or an assist on an enemy god. So the way flat penetration works is right now we have about 40 magical protections. If we were to deal damage to an enemy who had 40 magical protections, we'd be dealing damage to them as if they only had 30 magical protections. We're going to use our ultimate. There we get some good damage onto the Fafnir. We're going to throw out our 3, throw out our 1. Naki's able to get the cleanup. And throw out our 3. Unfortunately misses. We connect with our 1. So right now, our flat penetration, if we were attacking somebody who had 40 magic protections, is acting like 25% magic penetration. So flat pen is really effective in the early game. It is not that effective in the late game. Enemy missing middle. Your left tower is under attack. Yes. Your right tower is under attack. Cancel that. Save yourself. Got our meatball. Miss our one. It can be a little tricky to hit the meatball and then your one. However, once you get that mechanic down, it's going to be very easy to get damage off with Vulcan. I feel like it usually takes a game or two to get the 3 1 down for me. They're kind of pressuring our red. Luckily, Nike shows up. Baron is also here. Looks like they're just kind of showing up. They're not really trying to do anything. We think Nike's talking to us, so we're just like, alright. There we go, there's some good damage. We're gonna cast our ultimate. And Nike's able to clean it up. I think we hit Baron with our ultimate. We're gonna go ahead and clean up the wave. There are three and connect to three people. It's a Fafnir ultimate. We're gonna hit our one as soon as he lands and can take damage. Poor guy. 
Our whole team's here in mid. Sukiyomi shows up. We're completely out of mana, so we're going to start peeling back. Get some great damage onto the Baron, and that is another assist where we get somebody below like 10% health, and then somebody else is able to clean it up. We're going to start working on Soul Gem for our next item. Unbats is going in deep. We're going to throw out our three, throw off our one. Start falling back. We're gonna go cast our ultimate, and unfortunately Baron's able to walk right out of it. We might have gotten the pick right there. We fire our one off, connects onto the Baron, and Nike's able to clean it up. Yet to another assist for us as Vulcan. Fafnir's transforming, so we're gonna start running away. Help. Enemy ultimate Looks like they're pushing left. They might be going for gold, but we do have it warded. Suki always on us. We're gonna throw out our three. We're able to get the knock up. Fire one. Humbass is able to clean up the Fafnir. Paul is able to clean up Sukiyomi. Yet another two assists for us. We're going to go ahead and pick up Soul Gem. Soul Gem is going to provide us 80 magical power, 150 health, 12% lifesteal, and 10% cooldown reduction. It has a passive that on successful hit of an ability, you're going to gain one stack. At four stacks, your next ability that damages an enemy god will deal bonus damage equal to 30% of your magical power to each god hit and will heal you and your allies within 20 units for 40% of your magical power and will consume the four stacks. So Soul Gem is just a great item to get some additional damage off and to provide some small heals to your team. If we can get our ultimate to hit on the four stacks, we're going to go ahead and use our beads, avoid the Osiris stun. If we can get our ultimate to hit on the four stacks, it's going to deal a lot of damage. We're going to go ahead and cast it. Throw out our three. Kind of waiting for that, that yank. We're able to use our one to avoid the Tsukiyomi stun. Use our Aegis, throw out our three. Fafnir's transforming. We're gonna go ahead and set up a turret. We tag Tsukiyomi with our one. It's a freeze by Ymir. We're gonna throw out our meatball, but Nox used her beads. Throw out our two, throw out our one. Yet another assist for the Nike. If you take a look at Vulcan, he has kind of a greenish bluish glow around him. That means his next ability is going to activate the Soul Gem proc. After going into Soul Gem, we're going to start working on Rod of Tahuti. Right after Hootie, when we get to where we start getting these kills instead of getting these assists. I can't remember the last time I was 1 0 and 10 as a mid laner. Attack the Gold Fury. On my way. Gold Fury is pretty free right now, so we're going to rotate over to it. Looking a little less free now that Tsukiyomi's here. 
We do have our ultimate for secure if we need it. We're going to stay in the back line here. Throw out our turret, but Nox uses her too. Throw off our one. I swear, we just live to assist this Mikey this game. I'm going to throw out our three, cast our ultimate. Paul was able to get that pick. You're going to chase down the Tsukiyomi. And we're able to get our second kill this game. We set up our wards, and then we're going to go ahead and back. We're just gonna march up middle lane. Retreat middle lane. Never mind. We're gonna go for our enhanced red buff. I need the jungle buff. Whoops. Boy. So I say this, or I meant to say this at the beginning of the video. But the full build is always in the description of every video. I still get a few comments on the YouTube channel saying like, Hey, it'd be cool if you listed what items you would have gotten that you didn't get in the video. And I always hit them with a full build is in the description. Smiley face. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep holding down mid. Three people here. We get tagged, we're gonna fire one. We use our beads. Threat our two. Threat our three, I meant. We're gonna go ahead and cast our ultimate. And we're able to get a pick onto the Tsukiyomi. We're gonna march up mid. So Nox ultimate down. We're gonna throw out our three. And we're able to clean up the Nox. And the enemy team surrenders. Well, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It really helps these videos out. If you feel like you learned anything at all, check out the channel and subscribe for more content. These stats for this game will be posted in just a moment. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. We had the most player damage. Bye-bye.